which brings me to the traumas that we can suffer as a um, therapist. Actually, we have a legal, ethical obligation to our clients, which isn't reciprocated in the same way. Okay, and clients come in with a physical device. Yeah. Some of those clients do not know about their device and the what we call the default settings. So quite often they are coming in with what's known as geolocation turned on on their phone, which means that actually they can be tracked. And if they can be tracked, you can be tracked. So for example, if you are dealing with a client who is in a coercive relationship and they come into your therapy room and they have an ex-partner who is trying to track them, there is a way that can happen. They can also tag themselves. I'm just checking in to see my therapist and they can tag, put a geolocation on their phone, which then tells everybody else in the world where their therapist is. Okay, so some of the conversations that we now need to start having with clients are going to be changing very, very much towards the, the world of cyberspace and how we now need to, to change the contracts that we have with clients about what device do you have, what have you got on your device, which changes us again into that e-safety expert, which most of us are not. Um, I'm privileged that my background is in computers and I'm privileged that this is something that I've been monitoring for. 11, 12, 13 years. So I'm, I'm pretty much savvy, uh, is the word that I'm wanting. Um, but I'm nowhere near as savvy as some of the children. Okay. There are things that um, clients can do to find out information about us. So, so if I hear people say, I'm not on Facebook, um, you are, you just don't know it. There is some information about you somewhere. For example, at the TA conference, people were taking pictures. And those pictures will appear on the internet. So even though I've not been named and I don't, I don't put pictures on my personal profile that I want public to see. Actually, if somebody knows that I went to a conference or that I'm involved with a certain governing body, they can go and check that governing body's website. They can find out information about me. And also, that means we can find out information about our clients. I don't know how many of you are on Facebook and sometimes get what we call um, people you may know. So you get like a, a part that says people you may know and sometimes you may see your client's names there. That isn't because your client has been looking for you. Okay? The algorithms on Facebook do it through, again, the GPS system. Yeah. So, quite your often. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm a, a WhatsApp user, and obviously, if I've got a client's number, they appear in my WhatsApp, which means that technically I'm in their WhatsApp as well. Okay? So, I'm, I'm aware of the potential for clients to find out information about me, and for me to find out information about clients that I don't want to know. So regularly clients do do things to try and get in contact with you. They will add you as a friend. They will maybe set up a different account to see if they can add you as friends. Um, they will set up groups where they can talk about you. And, and so it's, it's really interesting the way that the internet is actually being used by younger, peop younger people and older people as well. Um, and I've forgotten where I was just going to go there. Yeah. So, the, so the, other, uh, the other information is actually we need to be able to look after ourselves on the internet in a way that's appropriate, but also knowing that actually clients can find out information about you that you may not want them to know. So it's being prepared for that information to come into the therapy room. Um, quite often now, we've all got a social media account of some description, and that's where I was going. And the other thing that I've noticed is it's not just been in uh, your group, Rory, but I have seen... And I am very, very concerned, which is what I was speaking to the BACP about, the number of therapists that are chatting in groups on Facebook and other social media platforms and talking about their clients. Um, they're, they're actually putting information up that makes their client very identifiable. And in fact, there was one that I was looking at this morning where what I did was I went to that, that therapist's profile. I found out where they work, I found out what city they're in, so I now know I can go and find out where their client is and who that client is. Which actually puts us into a really ethical, legal, political kind of dilemma that actually what do we do on the internet? Do we try and stay off it completely, which I know that there are many therapists who say, well, I'm not going to go on the internet. And actually, as I've already said, you are on the internet, you are in cyberspace because you attend places where people now can take photographs, can tag you, can talk about you. If you are working with people, there is the potential for them to put you on the internet. 